So recently after one of my sessions doing uh, Backworth Bingo, I was asked, how do you do this? Because I'd like to do this for my parents. Um, so it's really quite simple. Um, you've got one bit of software to install to a stream called OBS, uh, and the rest of it can be done either via YouTube or Twitch. I'm going to show you YouTube because it's pretty easy to sign up. Um, and it's something I've been used to in the past um, uploading videos to, but only recently started doing the, sort of the live streams. So your first step will be to go over to Google, uh, sorry, over to YouTube, and basically sign yourself up an account if you haven't already got one. If you have already got an account, um, it's pretty best to do this on a computer, but if you go to youtube.com, what you should see in the top bar is an actual little sort of camera icon with a plus. When you click on that, it gives you the option to upload a video or to go live. Uh, so, first things first is to go over to going live. And you can see that this is the uh, YouTube studio. Um, now, I'm going to click new stream, but I'm going to leave this here for now because what, what we need to do first of all to be able to stream is have a bit of software called OBS Studio. Now OBS Studio is free. It is very, very complicated if you want it to be. And it, but for the purpose of doing live stream bingo, it's very, very simple. So first thing we do uh, for OBS is go to obsproject.com. That's obsproject.com. And you want to download uh, either Windows, Mac, or the next version. Now it's going to be exactly the same for any of the operating systems. I'm doing it on Mac OS X. Um, but it's exactly the same for Windows and it'll be the exact same for Linux. OBS does not differ across the platforms. It's um, across all the platforms exactly the same. It'll look a slightly bit different for your version to mine if you're using Windows and I'm using Mac. And um, that's purely because of the cosmetics. Uh, but otherwise, everything will be exactly the same. Once you've downloaded OBS, uh, what you want to do is install it. Uh, and once it's finished installing, you'll want to load up OBS Studio. Right, so in OBS Studio, you have um, the main area, uh, which is going to show you, uh, be showing you what you're actually streaming, um, and that's the big black box, you, uh, big black box that you see there. Um, down here, is screens. So if you're doing different bingos or different, uh, say. Uh, you're live streaming your games if you're doing games or at quiz night you could have your different various different uh, setups your scene setup in sources that will be what you're actually showing to people so in our instance we're just going to do a single window with a single web browser um, then the next block along is the microphones and audio so if you want to have yourself bingo calling you'll obviously want to have uh, this unmuted which we'll come to in a minute um, and then you've got two options, start streaming and start recording. Obviously, we want to start streaming because we want to do this live over the internet. So that, that's that's where we're going to basically start. Now, for my bingo, um, I was lucky enough to find a service online um, that will basically do all the hard work for me um, called onlinebingo.info. Um, and if you go to onlinebingo.info forward slash bingo, hyphen machine hyphen 90 that will give you um, a 90 ball bingo number generator now this generator is really really good um, nice and simple what I would suggest you do to make your life easier is I would load it into a separate browser window so open up a new Chrome uh, or new edge browser if, uh, if you're using Windows um, and then load up this website in that window um, very easy to use, just click next ball, does the next ball, and it just carries on like that, so you could be clicking them out, uh, clicking them out, reading them out, um, and then once you've finished that round of, uh, of bingo, you just hit new game and start again, so it's really, really simple. So once you've got this in its own window, and the reason I say putting this into its own window, if you've got many tabs open, it's very difficult for you to target the tabs, so the easiest way to do things is to open up a new window, uh, so you've got YouTube in one window, um, and then in the other window, you're going to have uh, your actual bingo call in. So once that's open, and OBS is open, we can go back to OBS, and what we're going to do is we're going to 
set up a new one that is, uh, we're going to call this uh, Bingo Demo 2. And then what we want to do is we want to stream to the people that we're pl playing this with just that bingo window. So what we do is we go all of the pop-ups. You never have any pop-ups. And as soon as you want to do a, a screen capture, all the pop-ups in the world pop up. Um, <laughs> what you want to do is you want to come to window capture. Uh, and then we're going to call this um, oops bingo website now if you had more things going on if you had more things that you wanted to show on screen then you'd probably want to name them all uh, appropriately but we're only having one thing to show so you don't even have to rename it if you don't want to then we want to go down here and we want to look for the windows now as you can see we've got all these different windows but what we want is Google Chrome in my case it could be Edge or uh, Firefox or Safari or whatever browser you like to use um, and then bingo 90 now what that does is that gives us the uh, web browser page and just that page. So if you want to flick backwards and forwards between um, the bingo page and your YouTube stream uh, in the studio just to make sure it's still running, this will let you do that because uh, basically all it's going to do is only ever record that view. Now for us that's perfect because we only ever want to show this view to um, the people that are watching. So what we can do is click OK. Now you'll notice in this view it's a little bit big because we've got a smaller work area. So what we have to do is click on the, the corners and just shrink it down um, because essentially this black box is what's going to be shown on your stream. And so then we can just make that pad the, the whole area out. So that's our first step. Second step is we're going to want to make sure that the microphone's unmuted. So you should have down here your audio mixer. Um, and then that should obviously be showing you that you can, well, basically the, the audio volume levels. Always try to keep it in the green. Um, yellow is fine, but obviously red is going to give you that horrible crackle. And then what we want to do is in our sources, we want to do audio input. And um, we're going to just call this uh, bingo caller. And we just want built in microphone. Um, now, what we don't want is to have two of them going in at the same time. Um, and then we just want to adjust this till we're happy. Uh, so as we can see, as I'm talking, it's going down and down and down. And that should be about right. You basically, you know, ideal world, you're always going to stay in the green. But everyone's got different pitches and tones. And unless, unless you're very monotone, you, you're always going to jump up and down. You want to just make sure it's near the top and, it, and it's quite as consistent as possible. Um, at that point... You know, we've done all that we need to do. Now, when we do a stream, we have to give OBS a thing called a stream key. Now, that key is what tells us, uh, what tells YouTube that we're authorized to broadcast. So, what we do is we go into File, Preferences, we go to Stream, and then under this drop down, you'll see all the different platforms. So, if you don't have any, um, any luck with the other platforms or your pet uh, your, your parents or family whoever it happens to be say for instance they've all got Facebook access so they could do Facebook live you can change to the different streaming services but obviously we're using YouTube here so we'll select YouTube now at this point we need to go back over to YouTube studio and we need to create our stream details so the stream details of this will be um, bingo demo uh, it's going to be public. Uh, if you don't want anyone else, the likelihood of someone else joining in is very low. Um, they can't really do anything other than watch, perhaps put some comments in the chat. Um, but if you really don't want anyone else to know, you can do unlisted. Uh, if you do unlisted, then it's still available, but basically you have to tell people the URL rather than them going to your YouTube page and watching it from there. I suggest leaving it public just for... Uh, just for making it easier because obviously some people are more technically gifted than others so having to explain to them how to get that onto their YouTube on TV or another device might be a bit more difficult so for ease, simplicity sake let's just keep it simple and uh, we call the description for this will just be bingo 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 demo um, doesn't really matter what category you put it under um, you know I, I put my streams under entertainment 
Uh, it definitely wasn't comedy, uh, unless you're laughing at how bad it is. Um, so we'll just put for entertainment. Uh, you can schedule it. So if you're going to if you want to come in here and do your preparation early, um, then you could come in here, schedule it for say like I was doing for seven o'clock. Um, you can always go live earlier. Um, you can upload a thumbnail. Uh, on mine, obviously, I've got the bingo uh, thumbnail, but obviously, you uh, you don't have to put any thumbnail. Um, next up is just to say, uh, no, it's not made for kids. Age restrictions. Um, you know, <laughs> if you're going to get naughty with it, obviously, put yes, restrict to 18. But otherwise, I won't worry about it. Uh, so that creates a stream. Um, and what happens is, once this page loads up, it's going to give you information about your connection and everything like that. When I did my first one, I did it on normal latency. That gives you about five or six seconds where you say something, and then eventually it will appear on their screen. Uh, if you go over ultra low latency, it's about a second, a second and a half, but you don't have as much buffering option. So if it cuts out, then obviously people will jump forwards. It, it could be a bit more distracting. Uh, normal latency as well I found gives you a nice flow to the bingo calling, gives people plenty of time to call the numbers and as a caller if you're having to type the numbers in a chat as well it gives you that little bit of extra sort of time to do that. Um, I guess maybe it could be a bit faster but you haven't really got loads of control over that delay. Next up um, for us to be able to take our stream from our computer and put it into YouTube, we need to go to the Steam, uh, stream key um, and we can reveal this because I'm not going to use this one again. Uh, but we copy that and then go back over into OBS Studio. And where we've got stream key here, we want to replace what's in there with that new key. So we can see that this one ends in 1R3J. And if we reveal this again, 1R3J. So now that they match, that means that this uh, broadcast from our machine that we're about to put live uh, will be authorized by YouTube to to, to stream. Because otherwise, anyone could just stream to your uh, to your account, which obviously wouldn't be very good. Now at this point, we've got everything in place that we need to do. So we've got the window. We can see the windows here. Uh, we've got the audio. We can see the audio levels are looking okay. Um, the next thing we'll do is press start streaming. Now. Down here you've got like a health bar. If that's going red a lot, then that means you're going to be dropping frames. Now, if you're a gamer uh, or doing something more complex, you, you would probably worry um, about drop frames and stuff. But this is literally a static screen where a number pops up and stays there. Um, the majority of information coming across your stream is obviously audio. So you should never have any real problems. Um, if you've got an older machine, uh, then obviously, you know, it's it's streaming software so it's doing, putting quite a lot of stress on there but should be fine if OBS crashes and OBS does crash it's brilliant it's free but it does have its uh, problems at times if it does crash all you have to do is apologize to your viewers because your stream will still be live um, and then open up OBS studio again and then press start recording and what happened is your key is already stored there so it should start streaming um, all on its own all over again so you know no harm done um, when we come over to uh, YouTube Studio again, as you can see, up in the preview window, so this is a preview of your stream, you can see that it's the, 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 the screen that we were seeing in OBS is now available um, on our stream. Now, this isn't live just yet. As you can see up in the corner, it says go live. So until you press go live, no one else will see this. So what we want to do is once we're ready to go live, we'll hit go live. Um, and then that will broadcast across uh, the internet for all the people that are playing to see. Now, I'm not going to do that because um, I don't want this one going on to my channel. But um, essentially, that's that's all you have to do. And then when you want to finish, uh, come back up. Actually, no, I'll do it. Let's do it. So we'll press go live, and then you'll see that it goes live. Now, one tip I would uh, give you is on another device, open it up on mute. So you can see that the channel is streaming okay, and then if you have any if you have any issues, you'll be able to tell. Um, and that's what I noticed, like on my last stream, that there was a few issues with uh, with latency, and it wasn't working as as well as it should have done. But essentially, by doing that, you can see what's going on. You can also see the health of your stream in this window. Um, when you're streaming, you'll be able to see how many people are connected uh, via the analytics. Uh, if you click on stream health, it will tell you that you know things are excellent as long as your connection's fine. With this, you probably won't need such uh, high width um, 
high bandwidth uh, connection for streaming because the uploads on this will be very low. Um, obviously, I haven't set mine up for optimal um, resolution, but that doesn't matter for what we're doing. You know, like I said, this is very, very basic stuff in the world of streaming. Um, once you've finished doing your calling, all you have to do is say end stream. Um, are you sure you want to end? Then yes, and then that's it. Um, and it is literally as simple as that. Um, the only issues you probably could face is a bit of buffering, uh, where your internet's slower. OBS sometimes can crash or lose the stream. Um, all you have to do is open up OBS again, and then obviously once OBS is open back up, hit start streaming, and everything will go back to normal. And that's it. Um, if you have no joy with YouTube or you want to use another platform, then you can go and sign up to Twitch or Facebook Live or one of the others. Um, it's really simple to do. Uh, they're also always they're all free as well. So you know, literally free streaming platform, free software to stream that, and that's all you need to do.